So uh, every now and again, I like to check in with MSNBC. Extremely biased source of uh, news, but uh, let's see what their opinion is on the Biden administration. See what the left's take is on itself. Now it's kind of funny because usually they support each other, but uh, they're like the Spider-Man meme pointing at each other. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of like uh, the people inside of the Biden administration or in, in, inside of the, like the Democratic Party fighting with each other and you know like one media organization is taking one side or another. Um, and their whole summary is, Biden's press conference highlighted Democrats' midterm danger. And as no surprise, everybody knows this by now, Biden's poll numbers are bad. And he has failed to achieve much. Now, of course, they're going to chalk it up to, you know, Republican obstructionism. But I guess... I mean, the people on the, the far left, like the Jimmy Dore left, not, not the centrist, they would say, hey, you know, you are elected to get, to give things, things to people. Where's the free cash from the citizens? We need results. You know, like, let's say this article says, um, what, what, what was on his agenda here? Okay, Democrats did promise a lot in the early days of administration, as they should have. As they should have. Okay, <laughs> a list of policies that have been put on the back burner or stymied through obstruction over the last two decades is massive. Democrats have, one time or another, promised to tackle all of them, including but not limited to, increase the amount of affordable housing available, providing relief from student loans, lowering the cost of child care, and providing paid family leave. Raising taxes on the wealthy, <laughs> except when it comes to California and New York, we need to lower taxes on those. And corporations to shrink the wealth gap. Reining in brutal police forces, strengthening labor laws and unions. And none of those have come to pass or even moved forward since Biden's inauguration. Uh, yeah, and so a lot of the policy here will just stuff that's like giving things to people, freebies. I think, here's here's my thesis, now hear me out. Um, it is basically some researchers in, in like, in Scandinavian countries, uh, they did this opinion polls and this is definitely not what they wanted to find, but you can tell, you can tell, like at a, you can I more trust the scientific study where the actual person or the people that are doing the scientific study come up with the results that they didn't want to find because then you could definitely see how they did everything in, uh, everything in their power to to make sure you know what I mean that they were right before they reluctantly concluded like well oh my god yeah that is true so what's the finding is the more immigration now, don't get me wrong, I'm not against immigration, but the more, like, the countries with a lot of, or I'll, I'll put it this way, countries that are homogenous can possibly stomach more welfare because people just think that as, as like, national civic pride. Now, the more immigration you have, the more human beings just don't want to contribute to other people's welfare. Now, I'm not, I mean, I'm against welfare, pro-immigration, but that's neither here or there. I'm not trying to, this is not a moral judgment. This is just like a scientific observation. So, I think the more, the more America becomes diverse, uh, the harder it will be to pass any kind of new uh, socialist or big government legislation. I mean that's giving money direct i mean i'm sure there's like a lot of corrupt stuff that gets passed but that's giving money directly to the people because people are just don't want to pay for the immigrants that are coming in or for the perceived that the money will go to the immigrants now there is a kind of counter example i thought to figure it out i mean la is super liberal progressive 
has a ton of migration and then they're trying to do a ton of redistribution um so i gotta you know what i mean figure a square put a round round peg into a square hole here but other than that example you know it's usually i think the human psychology is this way so they are going to have really hard time here um and i think it's a good thing <laughs> i think we should open up the immigration even more than uh, now this article keeps going on paradoxically biden's create uh catering uh Cratering poll numbers can at least be in part to attributed to the trifecta Democrats hold. Frustrated voters point to the campaign in Georgia last year to guarantee that control over the Senate alongside with the House and the White House would yield results. The promise changed, they ask, but longest time in history the Senate has remained evenly split. A House majority just 10 means that any holdouts have wielded outsized influence. That power has mostly been used to halt any progress on the Build Bad Better Act, which is meant to be centerpiece of biden's economic agenda and primary achievement of for democrats to run on this year well they should just don't worry let the republicans get in i mean if you can see if you look at economic charts the republicans are the biggest spenders the the most austerity happens when a democratic a democrat is in the white house and the republicans are in charge and they just block all of his agenda if you want the biggest spending, the bar the Republicans claim to be for small government austerity, but when their own Republican uh, president is in the White House, they spend like a drunken sailor. So if you know, if anything, they just hey, just wait for the Republicans to get into power. Compare the situation with the uh, once pre uh, President Donald Trump's face the first year in office. For like chaos that came from information from being just Trump had to keep being uh, being himself to maintain the support of his base. Administration forced on rolling back regulations and dismantling the gears of the government, even that court court losses and investigations stacked up. And in Congress, all the GOP had to do was hold the line and pass some tax cuts for the wealthy. Although this is this is not quite true. There's been studies done afterwards that. A lot of them, the most of the tax cuts were went to went to the middle class, not the wealthy. But of course, they're gonna have some throw in some propaganda here. Democrats took back the House in 2018 based on the promise that they would both stop Trump extremism and get things done to better lives for Americans. But it's hard to build things than it is to break them, leaving Democrats with a symmetrical challenge. Republicans aren't promising to do anything different should they run to run return to power uh no uh i can see him promising some stuff how about why is it, uh, this whole political diagnosis uh, this whole political diagnosis diagnostic here there isn't a mention of covid maybe just people a large majority even people on in the moderates or on the left are just tired of these COVID lockdowns and this COVID like extremism and they see the red states just going about their lives without any additional deaths or hospitalizations and they just want things to get back to normal how about that I think the COVID lockdown thing the COVID masks and everything along to do with that prop people just want to go back to normal if the democrats would just return the country to normal probably that would help the democrats a lot that would take a lot of steam behind the republicans he is right there is no republican agenda for 2023 how do you know this beyond aside from gaining and sustaining power well first of all yes that's all politicians you think the republicans are like are only more power hungry hold on one second Hey, stupid cast. Yeah, as as if <laughs> as if politicians' brain just changes. If you're on the left, you're a, a, a humble servant of the people, and will just sacrifice yourself and your career, political career, to serve the people. 
But if you're a Republican, you just you just you're you're just a greedy shill who wants to get you know uh, bribed by corporations and only want to hold on to power. You don't give a fuck about anything else. Um, this is like this is written for like toddlers. But you but you can't get great polls on the curve. This satisfaction as being expressed as real, as political put it. The problem for Democrats as they slog through a brutal two month two month for President Joe Biden's legislative agenda, their base is fitting its own centrist for black hat as often as does the GOP. It's hard to win support the party when the poll when the problem is coming from inside the house. Biden's planning a strategy reset that focuses less on his negotiations with Congress and features more direct talk to Americans. That's good, but most Americans' biggest problems can only be fixed through legislation. <laughs> and by that, I mean just legislation like uh, more government, higher taxes, more debt. That's how you, pro you solve Americans' problems. Biden can't talk his way out of a voter suppression in states or grant an extension of Obamacare within the executive order. What voter suppression? You mean requiring an ID to vote? I mean, I guess that suppresses people who don't want to, who can't get an ID. I mean, how many people is that? I mean, if you're deterred to, from voting because you have to get a picture ID, I don't even know what to say to that. In the end, Biden and congressional Democrats are facing both a structural issue and a political one. How do you talk straight about the major problems that America is facing, claiming that you don't have the answers, but fail to implement them? Well, they should have known just right at the beginning. That should have been a red pill that Biden was campaigning. Like, hey, Trump was a clown. He let COVID rage out of control. When I get elected into office, some adults will take over. We're going to crush COVID. And he spent a couple months flailing, or flailing around. And then he just leveled with the American people, became real. Saying, uh, yeah, nothing the federal government can do. That's like a state thing. It's like the mask fell off. It's a sham. All the shit that he was talking about running for office, obviously he... People believe them because they are just like they were so like in such in, in such a rage, blind rage at Trump and all the propaganda. Not that Trump was perfect by any means, but but it's just like the blind rage for Trump or whatever, and just fueled by hysteria, fueled by you know the the, the media that made money off like. Trump's uh, sens sensationalized click like clickbait porn. The solutions may be, as Biden suggested, passing whatever chunks of the Build Back Better Act that can be made through the Senate, but Democrats still find themselves locked into a vicious cycle of failure. Vicious cycle of failure. Even if they do take uh, incremental steps to solving America's problems, they lose power, having been tarred as swinging too far left. So, the only way, there's the only solutions for American people are far left. I think a, a much bigger challenge is implementing stuff that the far left wants would actually cause you to get rejected because the results are going to be awful. People say what they want, what sounds good. It's like this is the this is the democratic dilemma in general. Stuff that sounds good is going to make people's lives shitty, and stuff that sounds shitty it will actually improve people's lives. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to break it to you. Republicans allow the situation to fester further making things all the more challenging the next time Democrats retake a majority. If Democrats get another chance at it all, given the lack of progress on voter rights in, in the face of GOP's willingness to overturn election results, there's no guarantee at all. 
Well, it's looking bleak for the Democrats, but don't you worry. This thing is very cyclical, and the biggest ally of the Democrats is just that the the Republicans do not have the balls to, you know, any kind of legislation that the Democrats pass. They don't have the ball. I mean, once you give people... A, Here's the thing that's working for the Democrats. Once you give people entitlements, once you give people free stuff, it's impossible to take it back. So any kind of Obamacare, any kind of free stuff, any kind of government program that they enact, it will stay forever. No matter how much Republicans oppose that, it's politically impossible with democracy to take any kind of benefits back. So the Democrats, even though they have shitty ideas... There, it will always be going to, uh, unless a catastrophe happens and we have to start from scratch or some unforeseen event, the government will always be growing, but debt was always going to be growing. These big, you know, programs are always going to be growing. There's going to be more laws on the books.